Thank you, Jesus. Kandang bring deng lang bong jatai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Manglejong bring dala. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Well, you know, if you would go with me, if you would go with me, and we'd go into a realm of worship that would last a couple hours. Hallelujah. But I, when I go there, I don't like to leave anybody out. There could be 99 people, and if there's one that doesn't participate, I'll just stop for the one and not preach. And I'll tell you right now, you listen to me. You stay here to the end, and you'll experience the move of God every time this meeting takes place. Every time, Father has never failed to stand beside me and witness concerning his word. He speaks through me. Hallelujah. And I mean, I'm telling you, there, if there's one thing that describes Father besides his love, God is love, is his faithfulness to those who walk with him. And that's me. I walk with Father. Hallelujah. And we know, I, 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 I follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus beckoned me and told me to come follow him. And I follow him in his obedience to the Father. I hear a lot of people telling me they follow Jesus. I wonder what it is that they actually do that he's doing sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Jesus said, come follow me. I follow him in his commitment and love for the Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the beautiful thing of it is, is he put all that in me. And all I have to do is be willing to fill it. And the Holy Ghost has come to so that I could fill it. Now, I'm going to minister a sermon tonight that I pray that you'll memorize. I pray that you'll memorize every verse of Scripture that I'm going to speak out to you by the Spirit of the Lord. Because if you do, then you will understand salvation. You'll understand the meaning of what it means to be redeemed. And you'll be able to say it in convincing words because they're not the words which men's wisdom speaks, but those words which God himself has spoken by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And you don't have to take notes necessarily because all the notes have already been written out to you for you by God's secretary himself. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Been written down. They say it's the most popular, the most published book on the earth. It may be the most published book, but I'm sure it's the least read. And that's a paradox. <laughs> Everybody's got one because it's just a religious icon. They think that having a Bible is going to make the difference of them making heaven. You could, I know I'm going to heaven. You know why, how I know that? Because I live in heaven today. People think that heaven is just some place that you go to after that you die. No, it's something that you're born into. Hallelujah. It's a spiritual realm where Christ Jesus right now is king and reigns sovereignly and supremely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All authority is given unto him in heaven and in earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can have this witness in your life. You don't have to be sad and sorrowful and, 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 and hurting and in pain, disappointed. But you can live in the beauty of his presence. Father, he's so gracious. He's so full of loving kindness and tender mercies. It doesn't matter how many times you mess up because of the obedience of one man, Christ Jesus, his grace and his mercy and his righteousness abound unto many offenses. Whereas by one man sin entered into the world and all died because of that sin. And because that death passed upon all men, all men found themselves locked into sin and there wasn't any way to get out. But when you want to walk with God, I'm telling you, not only does he get you out and liberate you, but he perfects everything that concerns you and has a means by which he can continually cleanse you. All you got to do is be willing to walk in the light as he's in the light and have fellowship with people like me. Amen. Amen. And I say like me because I have fellowship with him and everybody who has fellowship with him has fellowship with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody has fellowship with him. I have fellowship with. Uh, praise God. Isn't the Lord Jesus wonderful? Yeah. Oh, 
Father, I thank you that you gave me power and authority over all sickness and disease. That you gave me power and authority over every lying work of Satan, every accusing power of darkness. So that the people that have come and called upon your name might be able to find a strong defense in you and find a place where they can be strengthened and built up in the faith. And not be constantly harassed so that they cannot hear. <laughs> And Father, I pray in Jesus' name that every person in this place will be strengthened in their inner being by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. I want you to open up your Bibles. I'm going to get my Bible just so everybody knows I'm reading out of it because I think sometimes people think I'm just making it up. But oh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I wander often. I do. I wonder. I'm telling you right now, here's what I keep crying out to God to do. I've watched and seen over and again how that it seems as though the enemy is able to stop and hinder people. And I'm believing God that the anointing becomes so strong, the power of God becomes so manifest, manifest presence of Jesus. That's why, that's why Jesus died and the Holy Ghost came so you and I could have the manifest presence of Jesus. If I don't have the manifest presence of Jesus, I want you to understand something. There is re no reason that anyone should ever be without the manifest presence of Jesus. And when you don't have it, that's a scary thing. And if I could help people understand this, then they would get real serious about God so that God could then give to them all the things that he's purposed to give them. If I don't have the manifest presence of Jesus, I'm telling you right now, I get after it till I do. I find out what's wrong. I don't sit there and bemoan the situ situ situation and circumstance. Huh? You know, I told somebody the other day, it's a, it's a powerful thing. Don't get stuck in the ditch of rebuke, of rebuking. Huh? Get caught up and raptured in the realm of praise. Huh? Some people just stuck in the ditch of rebuking, rebuking, rebuking. They just ran and ran in a circle, rebuking, 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 rebuking. Ain't nothing going to happen. Much. Satan likes all the attention anyways. Rebuke, 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 rebuke. Say, say it again. You know? <laughs> rebuke, 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 rebuke. No, no, get caught up. Get raptured. Don't get stuck in the ditch. Huh? Of rebuking. The devil, you know. But rather get caught up. In praise. Amen? Amen? Could you get that? Would you write that down or something? Could you somehow remember that one? I'd suggest you tattoo that one on your hand. <laughs> You're going to tattoo something on your body. Tattoo something that's going to make a difference. Of course, I'm not for tattooing. I don't believe you should cut yourself and put ink in it. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to cut your flesh. And worship to idols. I don't know what. I guess the idol is just the idol of the culture. You know, the idol, idol of what's popular. What, the idol of what everybody thinks is cool. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Boy, I still feel like praising. I still like, I, boy, I tell you right now, I could just take it to another place. I feel it inside of me. I feel it fussed and loose. And I'm so blessed that, that David's learning how to flow and learning music and, you know, but we put so much time into developing Joshua, you know. And now he's up, you see Santa Cruz, and I'm getting back down here, you know. Because you, you learn how to go into a realm, and we devoted to helping people learn. Because you can have that for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, it works for me going down the road. I wonder what I look like sometimes. People passing by. My mouth's about as big as you can possibly get it. Because I'm worshiping the Lord, you know. You can't think that I'm, you can't think that I'm uh, talking on the telephone. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love his presence. See, if you'll enjoy his presence, you'll have more of it. People are, are, are caught in maybe enjoying themselves, enjoying the things in this world. Maybe, uh, unfortunately, they're not enjoying nothing. Maybe they're 
not enjoying themselves, but they're disappointed with themselves and aggravated with themselves and just upset with the circumstances. Of the situation. It's lying. That's, that's hell. Can I say this? Hell is the absence of God's presence. Therefore, without his manifest presence, then that is a, literally a dimension of hell. I'm not having no hell, man. <laughs> I've been seated in a heavenly realm. I don't allow hell in my being. I don't allow unholy things in my spirit. And if they creep in there for a minute or, or something, situation, circumstance begin to influence me, I'm, become, I'm a very, very aware of it. Why? Because I love enjoying His presence. I love staying in the goodness. I am devoted to the goodness. I'm devoted, devoted to following Jesus in the life that He revealed to us, which was the express uh, image of the Father. And Father's given it to you and me now. Now I know some of you have many problems in circumstances and situations, but I'm going to tell you right, none of them, right now, none of them compare to those who are in prison tonight for the gospel in China and Sudan and especially in North Korea. And other places. I was talking to a brother who was here the other night. I told him where they took me to jail in the, in the outside of Alexandria, Egypt, out in the desert. He said, no one comes back from there. And you know, I know that there's been many brethren who've been carted off out there into that desert. That remote prison out in the middle of nowhere. And they've never seen the light of day. You didn't, uh, nobody has suffered in here for Jesus like that. Or you have nothing. Most of what goes on with people today is they're just disappointed with whatever it is that's important to them. It has nothing to do with the will of the Father. And I, we want you to get captivated with the will of the Father because I'm going to tell you right now, it is just a wonderful life. And if Father would have willed that for me, He would have given me the grace to endure it. But He, had, he wanted me to come back here and talk to you here tonight. <laughs> Amen. He wanted to tell me, he wanted to come here and tell you tonight these things that he's put in my heart, that he's made real to me. I, I, I'm not here to impress anybody. I don't have any, I have no desire to impress anyone for anything. I'm not going to be graded or evaluated by you tonight. It is meaningless. So go ahead and put your what, a ruler or whatever it is that you use, your calculator away, because it's meaningless. It'll only hinder you. I'm going to tell you the things that are most important and essential for you to be able to enjoy the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, to walk in His manifest presence, to enjoy Him, to enjoy God. There's no reason for people to have to live under, the, under any kind of wrath or separation from God or, or any kind of rejection from the Lord in any way. He's made a way for us to live in all the good stuff. All you have to do is be willing to be honest and sincere with God. If you've done wrong, repent and, and commit yourself to the Lord and say to the Lord Jesus, cleanse me with your blood and to the Holy Spirit, strengthen me so I never do it again. Hallelujah. It's true. It's not any harder than that. And instantaneously, the Lord restores you and upholds you and keeps you. You don't have to do any pendants. You don't have to go through any, you don't have to go through several minutes of anguish and agony. You don't have to go through an hour of suffering or a, a day of just having a limited manifestation of His glory because you bad boy or a bad girl. Doesn't work that way. Satan tries to make it work that way. Don't work that way. So I want you to open your Bibles with me, please, to Luke chapter 24 and, I'm, and verse 47. And I want you to listen to the gospel. This is the gospel that we are commanded to preach. It's not possible to preach it, but by the power of the Holy Ghost. You must be endued with the promise of the Father from on high. And I have been endued with the promise of the Father from on high. Hallelujah. Uh, I, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, ha, ha, for He has anointed me, hallelujah, hallelujah, to preach this good news, hallelujah, hallelujah. to preach this gospel to the poor. Hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Uh, he's, forgetting, he's anointed me to open up the prison doors and proclaim liberty to the captive. <laughs> and so, to bind up the broken in heart. You came here tonight for inner healing, you came to the right place. <laughs> well, bind up the broken in heart. That's the inner healing right there. <laughs> Praise God. Instantaneous miracle of faith. Now you can go back to your former conversation and you can go waller in the mire and, and the regret and you can go back and you can, you can reminisce of all the problem and all the, well, all the misconduct and all the wrong decisions if you want. But God would rather that you no longer look back but look forward, leaving those things which are behind. Go ahead now and press on. Hallelujah. Don't turn back. Don't look back. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, believe what I'm going to say. Huh? Sometimes I wonder, sometimes I wonder, sometimes if, the, if Satan has afflicted God's people with certain diseases. Like OCD, <laughs> where everybody just constantly stuck in one thought, and it's abusive. Tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, no more of that mess. Tonight, I want you to believe the good news and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to voluntarily come under the rule of the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in Luke chapter 24, I want you to memorize these verses of Scripture, okay? Because I'm going to take, take you through the gospel road here, okay? And, um, and I want you to be able, to, be, be able to, to teach others as well. Um, in Luke chapter 24 and verse 47, and I want to I back up to verse 45 to just point out, then opened up he their eyes, then opened he their eyes, understanding rather, that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, thus it is written, in the Old Testament, we're going to find out and we understand and, of course, know that it was written that Christ would suffer and rise again on the third day. It was also written, verse 47, was also written by the prophets that, re that re repentance and remission of sin should be preached in His name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And tonight I want to talk to you about repentance and remission of sins. And I want you to pay real close attention, okay? And I want you to put the crackers away and the juice away and all the entertainment, other things away. And I want you to understand that this is far more important to you than any single thing that exists in your life. I'm going to tell you right now, this will keep you from everything Satan would try to do with your life, every deception that he would try to bring in your life, and it will result in your promotion to where that you can walk with God and enjoy everything that the Bible de declares and describes that we, that we should have. I want you to understand that repentance is absolutely equivalent to being born again. I want you to understand that God granted to us this wonderful power and this ability to be able to turn around, not to just agree with God. I think sometimes people think that repentance means that you're just going to agree with God. No, no. Repentance gives us the power to completely turn around and to have a whole new disposition with things. Now, I'm going to read a bunch of verses of Scripture to you. Are you ready? I want to, I'm going to talk to you first and foremost about repentance and what repentance means because repentance is all about that moment in time where you were born of the Spirit and you received a new heart and received a new spirit. And this is the repentance and the remission of sin that the Scripture declared would take place through the Messiah, Christ Jesus, though many people failed to recognize it. And so we'll just start over there in a very popular verse Scripture in Ezekiel chapter 36. And I'm going to begin at verse 26, and I'm going to end with verse 27. So everybody's turning there right now, Ezekiel 36. I hope you have your Bibles. I ought to come around and check. And I'm telling you, some of you need to put your electronics away. And you need to get yourself a real B-I-B-L-E. One that you can feel has some weight to it and has pages that turn. Okay, because I'm afraid those electronics are a bit of distraction because I found that text messages are coming in while people are using their um, 
uh, using their smartphones to look at the Bible. I mean, I'm about to the point to say, you know what, no smartphones in the, in the no phones at all in the meeting, you know, because it's a sacred place. I don't want you to be distracted with all that mess. I mean, the enemy's bombarding you with enough information. You don't need any more while you're sitting in here, okay? Huh? You need to learn. You need to keep your heart with all diligence. You need to learn to set boundaries on you. I never read emails after 7 o'clock in the evening. Huh? You know why? Because I want to sleep well. I want to have to deal with everybody's problems and everybody's issues. And Satan knows how to set up some attack against me at about 7 o'clock to try to mess with my sleep. You've got to have restrictions and barriers and boundaries. God wants to give you wisdom and insight to know how to do that so that you can prosper and you can grow and you can mature and you can be blessed. God has pronounced a blessing on you. If you and I don't have the blessing, it's something that's going on in our life that needs to be changed. God doesn't need to change. Isn't that wonderful? And God doesn't need to be convinced to like us. He loves us. He loves us so much that Jesus died for us at Calvary's cross. And I want everybody in this place to enjoy it. I'm tired of seeing people, God's people sick and, and, and disappointed, sick and unhappy, sick and poor and tired. Come on now. It's time. Come on now. Huh? It's time God's people live in, in the blessings of divine health. And hallelujah. Ha ha ha. And divine wealth. And, and, and divine rest. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just still got the shout in me. I still, I still feel like singing and rejoicing. So it's, it's, a little bit hard to, it's a little bit hard for me to shift here. Um, are you there? Ezekiel, 30, uh, Ezekiel 36, uh, 26. The Lord says, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a new heart of flesh. Say, I've got a new heart of flesh. Heart of flesh. Well, this because this is the new covenant. Jesus said, as the scripture says, that he would suffer for us and rise again and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name. And we know what repentance is. It's the gift of salvation, the ability for you and I to become a new creation, a new creature at the moment of repentance. We receive the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the living God comes in on the inside of us. First, the Spirit of the Lord creates a miracle. And the Spirit of the living God not only creates the miracle of the new heart and the new spirit, he puts the Spirit within us. But what happens is somehow people fail to live in the faith of that. They live rather in an unbelief. And they waver back and forth, up and down. God says, could stop wavering. If there's anything you and I want to do, and I've stopped, is to stop wavering. Because the Lord said, my, when I read that verse of Scripture in James, God said, let no man think he's going to receive anything from the Lord if he's double-minded. My goodness, I said, double-minded, you out of here. You out. I, I'm killing you. You out. And you're never coming back. I'm, I'm, you out. You're dead. And you're buried. And you're never coming back. You need to get forceful about the truth. You need to get forceful about the plan of God because there's an enemy of your soul who's going around doing exactly what he did in the very beginning. He's telling lies on God. He's telling lies on God's anointing. He's telling lies and speaking lies against the word of God. He's a foul spirit that only wants to destroy you and your relationship with the Lord. Dear people, this really comes down to you, being, you and I being able to hear from God. So what did he do? He took away the stony heart. He said, he said to his people at one time, he said, you made your heart like an adamant stone. And their heart became as an adamant stone because they constantly refused to hear him and obey. And he, so what, what did God say? I'm going to work a miracle for you. I am going to, by my grace, produce what the, on the inside of you that which will result in you being able to understand me, to be able to know me, to be able to interact with me, to be able to hear from me. Isn't God amazing? Yes. He truly is. So in verse 47, now forgive me, in verse uh, 27, and I will put my spirit within you and I will cause you to walk in my statutes. Look at that. I will cause you. I will give you the ability to walk in my statutes. I will give you the ability to keep my judgments and to be able to do them. Right now, by the spirit of the living God, I am able to fulfill everything that Father ever purposed for me to do.
If I'm willing to make his word the law of my life and his spirit the means by which I do it. Now, I'm going to go and I will read many of these verses of scripture for you in the New Testament. But I know I'm engaged in a battle right now on the battlefront of your mind. And I am intense about it because I understand what's going to happen. Many people here tonight will walk out of this place and they will forget this good word of God. They will not allow these things to be uh, established in their life. And as a result, there will be a constant unrealization of that which God has freely given. And I would rather have a miracle tonight so that the probability doesn't take place. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, I really like this new commercial that they got out. I thought, boy, that's really good. And it says Pinocchio would not make a good motivational speaker because he's standing there talking and he starts pointing at different people and saying, you've got great potential that you've never tapped into and his nose gets longer and you've got great and his nose gets longer because he's lying. The reality of it is people, you and I cannot do anything in this arena without Christ Jesus. You and I cannot take first step of knowing and walking with God until we learn how to hook up with the Holy Ghost. And I've discovered that many people are, are mistaken about what they classify to be the anointing and the manifest presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I am devoted by the, by the Spirit of the living God to seeing such a manifest presence of God burn in the midst of God's people with Holy Ghost conviction and Holy Ghost fire that a distinction is absolutely finally established in everyone's life. Hallelujah. And it should just go ahead and take place tonight. It should be something that gets established in your life tonight. Hard heart, hard head. Hard head, hard heart. You decide how, how, how pliable are you? How submitted are you? How yielded are you? The Lord worked a miracle for you to be very pliable, very submitted, very easily ruled, and very easily governed by the anointing. He's given you the ability to discern the anointing and be sensitive to the anointing. Let's go over and look at one of the great verses of Scripture. It has its corollary verse of Scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. But I like reading it in Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel chapter 11. Okay? And I believe it's Ezekiel chapter 11. And it's right about the same verse uh, vicinity, right around um, verse 18, I believe. And verse 19, it's verse 19. And I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within you. Look at this. Hallelujah. A different kind of a spirit. A spirit that makes you unique from all other mankind. A spirit that gives you a disposition that is different from all other mankind. All of God's prophets were known as those who had a different spirit. A different kind of spirit, a different disposition, a different insight, a different wisdom, a different manner of living, a different conduct, a different appearance. I'm going to give you a new spirit, the Lord says. And it's so unique. It is His spirit. It's His kind of disposition. It's His kind of glory. It's His kind of person. It's His kind of purpose. It's His kind of manner. It's His kind of conduct. And the Holy Spirit's here to train us, but we've got to be willing to be trained. We need to make this wonderful opportunity of being taught by the Holy Spirit more important to ourselves than anything else we can learn or have or gain or obtain in this life. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, that is rare. We're too influenced by what we see and what we hear, and what we believe about ourselves, and what we believe about the voice of God and the will of God. And it's not the voice of God. And it's not the will of God. Here's the voice of God. Here's the will of God. It's printed out for us. Do this first, and then you'll get some more instruction afterwards. But not doing this to then go and spend your life doing something else that you have subjectively heard? Well, 
You don't have that kind of insight and discernment to know the difference between the voice of the Holy Ghost and Satan who comes as an angel of light. Believe me, you don't have the discernment. Believe me, okay? Believe the instruction of the Lord. God gives us instructors. I pray you'll listen to the one tonight that the Lord gave you. I'll take out the stony heart. There it is, see that? That's the heart that can't be sensitive. That's the heart that can't connect with the Holy Ghost. That's the heart that can't feel His presence. That's the heart that can't feel the glory, that can't worship out of the, out of the glory, can't feel the praise, can't feel the love, can't feel the peace, can't feel the joy, can't feel the manifest presence. That's the hard, stony, calloused heart of sin and separation from God. In Israel, God's people walked in that. Few men stepped into the miracle of relationship with the Lord. David did. Few men, Ezekiel did. <laughs> Few men. And then they still prophesied of the grace and the glory that would be brought to us. They, saw, they prophesied of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. And they wondered, what time, what manner of time, when is this going to happen? Oh, can I have some of this? Can I enter into this realm of God? And the Lord said, no, no, it belongs to the church that's yet to come. It belongs to you and me. They saw our time, our day. Right now, the hour divine opportunity that somehow we've just, we have almost prioritized at our own convenience, making the things that we want and need out of the fleshly realm more important. God wants to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Him that your eyes can be opened so that you can begin to seek first the kingdom of God, put the things of God above all other things. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I command you to rise up. Be great revivalists in Jesus' name. I command you to rise up and be men and women of the Holy Ghost. People of the Spirit who walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit and led by the Spirit because they're filled with the Spirit and full of the Spirit. And the Holy Ghost flows out like rivers. What great dimensions, huh? I'll take away the stony heart, the Lord said, and I will give you that heart a flesh, one sensitive, ha <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, one very sensitive. Now, tonight, some of you, you may begin to question yourself and doubt yourself and say, my goodness, what's wrong with me? Well, that's good. You know, you need to examine yourself and see whether or not God's inside of you. <laughs> you need to examine yourself and see whether or not Christ is in you. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're never going to know that till you come under the rulership of the Word. And I'm telling you also, it's very easy to have this because God's a soft touch and He gave the sacrifice of His only begotten Son so you and I can have it. So I'm telling you, He's not withholding from anybody. He's given liberally and He doesn't make you beg for it. All you have to do is simply ask in a sincere and honest heart and the miracle comes. So ain't nobody need to be sad of a sad countenance here. Otherwise, you came. A sacrifice lies at your door and you're unwilling to offer it. The only reason somebody be sad or their countenance be cast down because they like Cain. And why did Cain, why, why did Cain, why was Cain's countenance cast down? Why was he sad? Because his deeds were evil and his brother was righteous and he was getting madder by the moment. At the preaching of his brother. So I want everybody to make sure you got a smile on your face lest you should be mistaken for a Cainite. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I heard A.A. Allen say one night describe how that he could tell people were demon possessed. He said, look at their sad face. Look at the sad face. Look at the gloom over top of them. See, that is the power of demonic possession. I said, when I heard him say that, I said, my goodness, if A.M. was around right now, a whole church would be demon-possessed. You know, like, uh, I mean, I just got a bigger smile while I heard him talking about it. I'd make sure I'm not, mis even though he couldn't see me, he's already dead. I'll make sure that I'm, God can see me. I'll make sure I'm not in that number. I'm going to ah, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I want to be bad like a sheep, okay? Not Billy and like a goat. Are you with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Or roaring like a lion. Huh? I enjoy saying, oh, well, Jesus is a lion in the tribe of Judah. I'm going to tell you right now, Satan goes about as a roaring lion. I'm not be roaring. Are you with me? Satan goes about as a roaring lion. You're not going to hear me roar. 
Okay, Jesus might be the lion of the, tri lion of the tribe of Judah, but he ain't roaring. Are you listening? All right, I'll do that better. He isn't. Okay. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's just go to, let's go and listen to Jeremiah. Now, what is that? Is that, what is that verse of scripture? You know that verse of scripture? What is it? Isn't it Jeremiah 24, 7? And that, you're going to memorize these, right? Yeah. Raise your hand if you're going to memorize these. Huh? <laughs> Gustavo blessed me the other day because he, you know, he was thinking about doing some different things. And he said, Pastor, he said, I was there that night when you asked everyone who would vow to give 10% of their time this year to the Lord. And he said, I was there, raised my hand. He said, I'm going to tell you right now, um, by the help of the grace of God, I'm going to follow through with my commitment. Come on, dear people. You vow, vow, you better watch yourself. And you need to go ahead and vow every vow of commitment to God. Amen? And watch yourself real close. Amen. Uh -huh. Because I tell you right now, if you don't vow to commit to God, you're going to mess up and lose your soul. And if you vow and don't keep the vow, you're going to mess up and lose your soul. So vow. That's your only possible answer and hope. For a remedy. Is that true? Sure, sure it is. And the good news is Christ Jesus is praying for us and the Holy Ghost is helping us. So we're going to do just fine. He's reminding me. He may gave me a sensitive heart so I could continually hear his tugging. I could continually feel his call to get it right, to do it right. And I shall cause you to do my will. I shall cause you to walk in my statutes. I shall cause you. I'll be right there on you. I'll be, I'll be pressing it. I'll be touching you. I'll be ministering to you. I'll be calling you back. I'll be saying, that ain't right. I'll be saying, you got to change. I will cause you to walk in my judgments. And that's a glory hallelujah to me. That's a praise God. Praise God for the ministry of the Holy Ghost. The one who's keeping me and perfecting me. Who's started a work and will finish it. He who began it will finish it. And that's the way I want it. I'm not going to get... I'm not going to be upset or weary at his often rebuke. I'm going to praise him. I'm going I'm to I'm say, oh, let the righteous smite me. I'm going to go up upon my high place and see what the Lord has to say when he scolds me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No rebellion in me. There's no rebellion in me. Doesn't belong in my life. There's no arrogance or obstinance against my father. At the slightest little touch of his conviction, I'm like a, you can knock me over with a feather. I crumble before his presence. Ah, because he gave me a sensitive heart. That stony heart that was like adamant stone that was rebellious, that refused to hear. It's not in me. And I, I'm not going to stand on my watch. And watch people that I could have an influence on have anything less than that sensitive new creation heart that is brought by the miracle of salvation. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let people be rebellious and stubborn. I'm not going to let people be arrogant and defiant. I won't allow it. Huh? I won't allow it. I won't allow it because I'm not going to allow, I'm not going to stand by and allow you to go to hell. I'm not going to stand by and allow you to miss out on the riches of getting to enjoy this beautiful presence of Jesus every day and know what it means to have life and have it more abundantly, to have the God life. I've got God life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, your heart's going to hear. Your, I, in the name of Jesus Christ, your ear is going to hear, your heart's going to understand. Your spirit's going to be able to see these wonderful things that the Lord has done for you and me. Go, go Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Tulamaradeya. Can you say Tulamaradeya? Tulamara Satanani. Tulamara Karabasi. Tulamara Siraban. Halabateri. Halabaksara. Mong lang bara ng taina, at hindi mikpera beta la mong stara, ala be kara si prongani, mangele kita kana ng lina, sandal bound na bena debre mande ite kara ng galombong tay, 
And it's so easy for you to do it because you've been doing it all day, right? Building yourself up in your most holy faith, keeping yourself in the love of God. You've been doing it all day. That's why it's so easy. That's why it's so hard to stop. You're continually being, being filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Speaking your songs, helping songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Giving thanks to God. Amen. Thanking Him for this wonderful work of grace. Thank you, Jesus. Come on now. Shout with me a little while. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, shout with me by a little way. Father, I can't believe what you've done for me. I mean, just think about it. It's just re it's reason to stop and, and pause when the reality of it strikes your soul. The revelation of it is real to you that this miracle has been wrought for us by Christ Jesus so that God would come and live and habitate in our life. Wow. Wow. He's, he washed me with clean water. John the Baptist came preaching the baptism unto repentance. They would come and get immersed down into the water, get immersed down into repentance and come up clean to now walk in a different way. Now they came up clean, came up, came up in that place of a, a repentant heart so that they could be prepared and ready to hear the voice of the one who would change that heart. Hallelujah. And baptize us in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The new life, the new creation, the divine nature, the sensitized heart, the new spirit, the wonderful realm now where God lives because he's made us through that wonderful work of grace, his temple, his holy habitation. Uh, I want you to memorize this. It's being on a YouTube for you. You memorize it. You can actually look at my face while I'm saying it. Read my lips. You can get every impact of the message. I want you to memorize the verses of the Scripture. I want you to be able to turn to them. I want you to be able to lead people in the reality of what it means to know God, to have repented, to be born again and made a new creation that now is one with God, one with one another. I'll give them one, I'll make them one new people with one new heart. You can't live divided and separated. You can't live in, in opposition against God's people outside of holy communion and fellowship, that cononea of oneness of the Spirit and be right with God. No. Man, anybody who's joined unto the Lord, joined unto the Holy Ghost, joined unto everyone who knows Him. It's true. It's true. I love all God's saints. Praise His holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this. Look at this. Jeremiah 24, verse 7. And I will give them a heart to know me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I don't have to wonder if I know. I don't have to wonder if I'm in the right church. I don't want to have to. I don't have to wonder if I've got the right Bible. I know I have this knowledge. Uh, and hereby we know that we know him and shall assure our hearts before him. For as he is, so are we now. Everybody looks at me like they in shock. <laughs> because that should have brought a shout of hallelujah. Oh, you know what you can't do it now? It's too late. That should have brought a shout of, of, of triumph. I'm going to say something tonight. I'm going to shock you. I'm going to say something tonight. I'm going to shock you. I've known this for a number of years. And I've not been allowed to speak it. But I want you to know where this world is going in its rebellion and its anarchy against God. Remember, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the, son, when the coming of the Son of Man. They were, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Is there anything wrong with the holy state of marriage? No, but go read Genesis chapter 6 and find out what marrying was going on. That's the apostasy and the rebellion of which this world is running towards. There are many things like this that are revealed. There are secrets in Scripture that God won't even let anybody speak because people haven't made up their mind to even just walk with God. But I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, the rebellion and the anarchy and the stubbornness against God and the defiance against His Word and against His anointing will bring men to such ruin that we, our state will be as theirs was then. I read about it in Genesis chapter 6. The rise of the occult is not for nothing. 
the rise of the, of, of the, of the manifest presence of Satan and men interacting with the, the realms of the demonic in the realms of witchcraft in the realms of every form of diabolical interaction will grow worse and worse. And you better be careful because I'm telling you right now, the atmosphere of this world is charged with this very influence. The God of this world right now, the spiritual wickedness that now reigns in this world charges the atmosphere with this influence. And you better make sure that you have no affinity towards it. You better make sure it's cut off from you. You better make sure. Because there's a whole lot more stuff going on than most people have any clue of. And I'm talking about the ones who are supposed to have insight and understand the things that are getting ready to happen. If there's anything I've been crying out to God for and saying, and I got a hold of a friend of mine even today. And I said, listen to me. I said, listen to me, dear brother. I said, you need to get on your face with me. We need to hear the Holy Spirit telling us what's getting ready to come. We need to understand what's getting ready to shortly come to pass. That's the Holy Spirit's what he wants to do. He wants to show us the things that are going to come to pass in the near future. I'm telling you right now, we have some preparing to do. We have some get ready to get uh, to do. We, uh, I think that many people have no discernment of the day in which we live in. These are the days of his great outpouring. And these are the days of a great falling away. It's happened. It happened simultaneously. And the outpourings and the glory and the moving of God will be greater. Amen. Will we be greater? Amen. But the apostasy will be greater still than it was the last time. I remember hearing some men of God who, who walked with the Lord in uprightness and purity and faithfulness. And in the, in the 90s, they said, yeah, we see the moving of God and the working of the Holy Ghost. But we see a greater blasphemy against the Holy Ghost that has ever existed in the earth that will happen simultaneously and we watched it. We watched his people tote the ghost and acted like they were getting high on the Holy Spirit. And then it ultimately, we watched that take place in the, in the, in the 90s and, we, and people acting like they were getting drunk and getting high all, uh, you know, just symbolically staggering around and, and, and acting like they were on drugs and whatnot. And then not too long after that, we began to see even a greater wave of, of the, of the uh, con, uh, condole, condoling, uh, drinking the alcohol and even smoking uh, a marijuana in the ranks of the church. Today. And it's growing worse. And it's going to get worse. And you better get over here. And you better walk over here and you better cry out for mercy. You better lay hold on the mercy seat right now while you can lay hold on the mercy seat. You better run to grace while grace is available. Because I'm telling you right now, grace is the means by which God has given to us everything that is in his heart to do for us. And it is abundant right now. It is abundant. This is acceptable day of the Lord no matter what you see going on. Huh? Uh, you, you, man, uh, listen. There is... There's great warnings that need to be sounded. And, uh, but I want to just stay right here right at this moment. And I will give them a heart to know me. That I am the Lord. And they shall be my people. We're talking about relationship here, people. We're talking about a heart to know God the way the New Testament describes it within the framework of how Jesus knew the Father. Jesus gave us the exact same relationship that He has with the Father. In fact, there's no other relationship available because the only relationship that exists is the one in Jesus and Jesus in us. So that is the one that clearly is for us to, to imitate, to evaluate, to demand of ourselves, for God truly demands it of us. To get out of the realms of doubt and unbelief and uncertainty that's got you distracted or disappointed or that somehow has opened up a, a gateway for you to hear the voice of Satan lying against the truth, speaking all kinds of propaganda against God, against you, against his servants, against his anointing, against his salvation, against his new creation, against his new heart, against his new spirit, against oneness with him, against his wonderful work of grace performed for us by the obedience of one man, Christ Jesus. You need to get the word in you. Get the word in you. Get the word in you. Somebody said, I don't have time. That is very foolish. 
you'll die for lack of the word. You'll die, you'll perish for the lack of the knowledge. The word of God, thy word, O oh God, have I given my heart that I might not sin against you. You know, when I'm going through anything, any situation, here's where I, I hook up with the Holy Ghost in a powerful way by getting into the word. Uh, if I'm going through any kind of, a, if I'm going through a financial situation, I'll go through all the scriptures that deal with God's blessing on finances and God's promise to bless us and God's promise in terms of provision for us. And I just get so built up in the faith. There's a connection with the Holy Ghost. Faith is ministered to me by the Holy Spirit. And I find myself immediately in a place in a realm called heaven, untouched by all the threats. I don't care what it is, if it's sickness, if it's disease, if it's disappointment, whatever it is, there God's word is there speaking to us. For me, all I got to do is just open up the Bible and just meditate on one verse of scripture and the power of God's so glorious. I got to I got to I got to hold on to myself so I can read a little bit more. Because it's revival time. But listen, people, I'm going to tell you right now, as sure, sure as God has sensitized your heart, sin and worldly care and doubt and unbelief will desensitize it. That's what the New Testament says. That the heart becomes hardened through the deceitfulness, the deceptive power of sin. And sin comes in many forms. Huh? Listen to me. Sin comes in many forms. The same sin that speaks against immorality also speaks against strife. I'm not having it in my life. It speaks against divisions. Huh? And I can go on. The list, the list goes on. I'm going to walk like Jesus. I'm going to walk in humility. I'm going to walk in lowliness. I'm going to walk in brokenness. Come learn of me. I'm meek and I'm lowly. I'm going to walk in meekness. Come on, man. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk in goodness. I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to walk in his righteousness because this is a place of safety. This is a place of the armament of God. It's a place where Satan can't touch you, where you can't be deceived. You're walking in humility. Satan ain't going to deceive you with rebellion. You're walking in meekness. You're not going to become self-willed and arrogant. It's a place of safety. You walk in love, you're not going to, you're going to continually forgive everybody so, from your heart so that you can also be forgiven. It, the, hey, the name of the Lord is like a t high tower. The righteous run in to say, amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It, it, the, the repentance and remissions of sin should be preached in his name. I am preaching to you tonight repentance and the forgiveness of sin, which is that, that is what the word is there. For remission, you probably remember, I, I taught everybody that Greek word. I'll give you a hint, office, right? Office is right. That's the Greek word for remission or forgiveness. Everybody remember that, right? Repentance and forgiveness, remission of sin. If we walk in the light of Jesus, like the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. I know that. I'm cleansed. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to be revealed. Are you ready to be revealed? I have this faith right now. I have this salvation. I'm ready to be revealed right now that I am in him and he is in me. And you need to be the same exact way. And it's a free gift. Somebody the other day was saying, oh, you know, they said, what is your goal? And I said, what do you mean, what's my goal? I said, I got many goals. He said, oh, you should have one goal. I said, oh, so you tell me what my goal is then, okay? What? <laughs> and he's like, well, you should be saying that Christ Jesus should be revealed in your life. I said, I already got that. That came to me as a free gift of salvation. <laughs> People trying to earn. They trying to labor for that which God freely gave. Jesus said, all you that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and I'll give you the rest. And people are, are laboring and heavy laden trying to get into the rest. Give God, the, yourself a break. I mean, quit trying so hard. Start praising them. Don't get in the ditch of rebuke. Get over here caught away in praise. Come on, man. Get caught up in praise. Get caught up in thanking God for all the good things he's done for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm working hard here tonight. I'm determined. I'm determined. That everybody in this place rises up in the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. The glorious faith of Christ. This is the faith that overcomes the world. This is our confidence. This is the power that stops everything Satan is doing. First and foremost against us. He comes and he has nothing in me. Thus he cannot influence me. Satan comes. 
but he can find nothing that belongs to him here. This is the purchased possession of God Almighty. I have been redeemed. The Redeemer, my Redeemer kinsman came and bought me back. I'm his land. I'm his possession. I'm his person. I belong to him. I was bought with the price. So are you. Quit selling out. Huh? Quit selling out. Take your ground and stand I believe that Job was classified as a perfect man because he would not let anyone take his uprightness, his righteousness from him, nor in any way impeach his integrity. Hallelujah. Because he found his righteousness and in his integrity in God. That's why people better be careful, go talking bad about you and pointing a finger at you because they don't know who you are. They cannot touch you without touching Jesus. Amen. Jesus said so. He said so himself out of his own mouth. What they do unto the least of my brethren, these my brethren, they do to me. And then we get to see it up close and personal when he said to Saul of Tarsus, Saul of Tarsus, why do you persecute me? Who is Saul persecuting? The Christians. The Christians. You don't touch a single soul of God's people saying, oh, point a finger. Who, is, who can lay any charge to God's elect? God done justified us. Amen. Better watch out. You know nothing about redemption. Better watch out. You know nothing about this goodness of God that has poured out upon us a gift of salvation that we did not deserve, that we just accept and embrace and rejoice in our salvation. With joy unspeakable and full of glory, having received the end of it, the completion of it, the finished work of it, the power of it, the glory of it. I mean, walk around all day enjoying the presence of God, thinking like this. Saint can't do anything about it. He is set on making you miserable, unhappy. He's set on causing all kinds of problems. If he could, he'd make you, he'd give you every disease in the book and you would be so poor that. You would have, there would be a new definition of poverty. Hallelujah. I, it's hard to get through verse seven. And I will be their God. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. When God is your God and he done calls you to know it, you didn't figure it out. You didn't convince yourself of it. He did a work of grace to cause you and I to know it. All you got to do is get quiet. Shut off all that lie and all that noise and all that unholy input and all that unholy influence. Just get quiet. Start thanking him for his goodness and you'll suddenly realize that God is your God. And you, his person, his people. And he's very jealous of his people. He's got a jealous love and a covenant commitment that cannot be defied and it cannot be broken. Paul described it when he said, nothing can separate us from this love of God that is in Christ Jesus. There's no power that exists in all the universe. Not in heaven, not in hell, not in earth. Come on, man. Come on. This is what God did for us. This is the gift of repentance. This is the, what it means to be born again. This is the new birth. This is a new heart and a new spirit. Don't tell me about no wicked heart. That's a defiance against what God did for us when he granted to us the gift of repentance and made us a new creation. And we were baptized into Jesus Christ and rose up together with him to walk in newness of life. That is a faith walk. There may be all these evidences. There may be all these proofs. There may be all these witnesses against you or against God that says it's not true. Believe God. Let yourself and every other thing and every other man be a liar. Believe what God said and watch it happen. Amen. Believe God's testimony because there's a lot of testimonies telling you just the opposite. And it's going to come down to the choice of your own will as to what you believe. I choose to believe God. 
I'm going to let Christ Jesus, the Word, rule over me. I'm not going to wait till some day in the millennial reign for Christ Jesus to rule over me or some day after I die and go to heaven, then Christ Jesus can come rule over me. But right now, thank you, I'm busy pursuing my own interest and taking care of my own needs. They don't want that. I'm letting him rule. He's king. It's voluntary rule right now. Amen. 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 Every time you feel the moving of God and you believe what I'm saying, you can go ahead and say amen. Shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My, this is good preaching. I didn't know that. It's hitting me now. I'm starting to get it. Anything like that. Thanks for being patient with me. It's just, I know it's taking me a little bit extra time, but you know, hallelujah. I'm starting to hear. I'm starting to hear. I'm hearing. I'm hearing. I'm hearing. I'm hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, gosh, every Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was in a workplace the other day, and somebody said, How can you be so patient saying the same thing to somebody so many times? I said, I got lots of practice. I've been a pastor for 30 years. We just, this is God. This is, this is the nature of the Lord. He's long suffering. He's got this enduring patience. You say it again and again and again and again. And he'll plead with us and he'll beseech us and he'll beg us and he'll call himself, call us unto himself. And he'll cause us to sit down and he'll wash our feet and he'll, and he'll, and he'll speak comfortable words to us. He'll speak words of authority and strength and power until we get it. He won't stop. He won't let up. He won't. He's good. He gives us a lifetime to hear. One lifetime. You do not get two lifetimes, one lifetime, one lifetime. The Lord saw in his wisdom that if a man cannot get it in one lifetime, if he cannot get it in the context of 70 years, he won't get it. If he lives to be 600 years old, he won't get it. Are you listening to me? I'm gonna get, I want to get it now. And the more I delay getting it, huh, the more I'm willing to allow it to be delayed, the more risk I run of never getting it. I'm cry out to God while it's today. While it's today. I'm not going to wait till tomorrow. I'm going to call out to God. I'm going to get serious. I'm going to get passionate while it is today. 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 Today's the day. Right now. I'm going to wait later. This is too precious. It's too glorious. And besides that, once you find a place of walking with the Lord where you get to enjoy His presence, His manifest presence, and it's just right there always, His comfort, the, the wonderful realms of the Holy Ghost, you understand how to connect with the Holy Spirit and allow Him to supply all that you have need of. You're living in heaven and you just don't want to live any other way. You're hooked. You're, you, it's just, and I want, God wants that for you. And I, I know some people witnessed to me or just said, hey, you know, this past Sunday morning, I touched that realm for the first time in my life. The, realm, the glory realm was here in a very powerful way. And I, I see an ever-increasing anointing and manifest presence of the Lord. I hear him saying, I cannot hook up with your doubt and unbelief. I cannot. I will not. If you're going to come to me, you must believe that I am God, that I am specifically your God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Without faith, it's impossible to please me. It's impossible, in other words, to be acceptable to me, accepted by me. It's impossible for you to interact with me. It's not that I don't want you too, you just cannot because there's no possible realm of doubt or unbelief that God's going to participate in. You've got to be willing to believe what he says. Amen. And accept the good news, the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is brought to us in the authority of his name. Amen. Amen. The power of repentance. Not repent, 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 repent. Repentance, the new birth. Now, there's the blood of Jesus to forgive you and cleanse you and wash you from your sins. Grab hold of it if you stumble up, trip up, if you do things that are wrong or not pleasing in his sight. He's right there to instantly and totally cleanse you. There, the Holy Ghost is. He's grabbing a hold of you. He's, he's, got, he's got his influence deep on the inside of you. He's causing you. He's making you. I'm going to get to those verse of Scripture here in just a second. I'm going to work my way to it. I'm going to work my way to it by going over here to Jeremiah 33. 30, rather. Jeremiah 30. I want you to memorize these scriptures. I want you to mem memorize. Huh? Yes. Hallelujah. You just talk a little louder to people that are hard to, heal it, hard to hear, it, hear it. I want you to memorize. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, but people are forgetful. You just repeat yourself. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said, I preached the old sermon, didn't repeat a single phrase. I, my, my response to that is, you needed to. <laughs> there needed, I'm going to tell you right now, we could take one sermon, say it over and over again until everybody starts live, living it, and then move to the next sermon. Amen. I can preach this one sermon right here. Just that would be it. Everybody start living this sermon, then we'll go ahead and move to the next sermon. Amen. <laughs> we just want to hear more information. Huh? It's just like, heart's going, his heart's shrinking, getting extremely small. Lord, help us. Yes. The power of God that is on the inside of you is bigger than all hell combined. One, the power of God that is on the inside of you. Christ Jesus in you. Christ. Bigger than all hell combined. Take every demon power, every fallen angel, group them up in one spot. And let them attack you by yourself. And you in Christ Jesus will absolutely, totally defeat them. Christ has already proven it. He's already proven their absolute and total defeat. If you allow him to live in you. If you allow him to exist in you. All the power of hell cannot stop you. Especially one little teeny sin. That sin can only influence you because you allow it. You want it. You've given place to it. You've given permission to it. You've bought into a lie and a deception to believe that you have to do it or you need it. No more. In the name of Jesus Christ, be strengthened by the power of God that dwells and exists on the inside of you. You give your whole being, spirit, soul, and body to the service of the King. To present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Because your bodies are his purchased possession. For your bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. And he's to be glorified in your bodies. Hallelujah. Your body is not for fornication. Your body is not for sexual immorality. Your body is for the Lord. Hear the new covenant, hear the blessing of the new covenant. I'll be in them, I live in them, I walk in them. I'll be their God to be my people. To grab a hold of it, to make it the pearl of great price, whom Christ Jesus is. To make it the most valuable, most important thing in your daily life. Your purpose for tomorrow is this and this alone. To live for Him, fully live for Him, to be that person that He made us to be so that we can know Him as our God and we as His people. So that the peoples of the earth will say, they are the people of the living God. They are the people who know God. God is in their midst. Yes, this is true. Jeremiah 30, 30, uh, chapter 30, and um, chapter 31, Jeremiah 31, and verse 33. This is a new covenant, as Scripture said. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with you, with the house of Israel, after those days, says the Lord. And you must understand, Christ Jesus is of the house of Israel. He came to the house of Israel first. He made this covenant with the house of Israel, removing the old covenant, abolishing it, canceling it, establishing it in the house of the Lord and made it now for all nations, all peoples of the earth. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Everybody whosoever will in all the nations of the earth, if they will just respond, no matter who they are, no matter how wicked, no matter what kind of, uh, of a family they come from. Father makes them absolutely glorious in their spirit and beautiful in their person, giving them the very nature that he himself possesses as a gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Oh my God, Tyra. I'm about to start doing some backflips as it was a chandelier. I'd start sitting, I'd start swinging from one <laughs> right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. My, my, my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could just walk around in the day talking to yourself about these things, encouraging yourself in these things, and have yourself a Holy Ghost meeting. This is how I connect with God. I connect with God, the Holy Ghost, through the truth of His Word. That's how I connect. People say, How is it that you find that place of the manifest presence? I connect with God by those things which He has given freely to me and made known to me through the truth that is in Christ Jesus, by His person, Christ Jesus' person, by His Word that manifests who He is, His person. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 30, forgive me, chapter 31, verse 33. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in the inward parts. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, my God, that's repentance. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, the spirit of life uh, is on the inside of me. The law of the spirit of life has freed me and liberated me from the law of sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, uh, so that I might be taught by God. He will cause me to make me to walk in His statutes, to teach me, to labor over me with great persistence and detail and affection and mercy and loving kindness until I get it right. Okay, I've been with you now these many years. We got that one point finally established. Praise the Lord. Now let's move to the next one. Now let's take another step. That's God. It's God. Nursing us as a mother nurses the child. Uh, you get a hold of these things and you'll walk around, you'll have a reason to praise all day. Now you understand what it means to give thanks and to rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. It'll be on the inside of you because of all the great things that he's done. Because all of a sudden you become aware of his communion and his fellowship with you and his great mercy and his great affection towards you and his great commitment. You'll never be depressed another day. You'll never be disappointed and cast down another day. Never. Not when these things are real to you that He's doing for you and in you and faithfully will continue to do. He says, And I will write them in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. I want you to go with me quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and we'll look at verse 18. As Paul takes these verses of Scripture, highlighting them as the verses of Scripture that describe to us what happened when we were born again. What happened when we received the gift of repentance. When we received, were granted the ability to repent and given the gift of the Holy Ghost. In uh, 1 Corinthians, or forgive me, 2 Corinthians, Oh, man, there's so many verses of Scripture. My mind's just racing with so many Scriptures right now to try to squeeze in here for you that I want you to get down. I want you to memorize them. I want these things to be in your heart. And, and uh, I'm, so I'm in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. He says, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. Watch him take all those new covenant scriptures of the Old Testament and make them applicable and real to us right now. Those of us who have been born again, those of us who have received the new creation in Christ Jesus, those of us who have been touched by the power of the Holy Ghost with the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. Wow. Get up in the morning and know that God got up with you and He's walking on the inside of you. He's moving your legs back and forth as you head towards the shower. Hallelujah. Consecrate yourself to the Holy Spirit. And say, Lord, I live for you. I want nothing to do with anything in this world. I want only to please the Father. I want you to take and reveal Jesus in my life. I want all that you would show me and do through me to be that all be all that I do this day. Watch what happens to you. Watch what happens to you. A manifest presence of God will thrill you, fill you. 
Oh, hallelujah. You find a whole new way of living. Praise God. Hallelujah. Kanabaka Sara Tara Nengle Shapaya. I will be their God. They'll be my people. Look with me quickly in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. I want you to memorize these scriptures. Okay. I don't have any notes up here. I want to show you. I don't have any cheat sheets. No post-its. Okay, I'm not asking you to do something I haven't done. I'm asking you to memorize these verses of Scripture so you'll be able with all plainness of speech to make known this wonderful gift of salvation that was given to us so that all men may hear and understand the gift of repentance and remission of sins that has been granted to us that we are to go and proclaim, preach in His name Amen. to all nations. This is the message. This is the message. This isn't just part of the message. This isn't just a message about the message. This is the message. See this book? This whole book from cover to cover is about redemption. It's about where God would come and bring back man unto himself so that now we being set free, liberated out of the prison of sin and death could now serve God and walk with him in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Amen. To be back in heaven, no more in hell. To be under his reign, no longer under the influences of the powers of darkness. That's the message. That's the hope. That's the grace that's been given. Don't forget so long as I'm in this tabernacle, I'll do my best to stir you up, put you in and remember some of these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you. For we have a sure word of prophecy right here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 8. Turn there with me. Isn't it good that it's going to be on YouTube? And yeah. those of you yeah. who might have not been able to keep track of all these various scriptures, you just go back, read, look, just go through it till you got it. Go to it. Go through it till you can just turn it off and then you can just walk through the scriptures yourself. You can start right there, Luke 24, verse 47. Go ahead and throw in John 3, 3. It'd be fine. Go ahead and throw in Titus uh, 3, 5. And okay, there's several other verses of scripture you can go ahead and embellish with. You know, just really establish what it means to be a new creation. Go ahead and get 2 Corinthians 5, 17 in there. We go on, there's a list there. But stick with this pr process of going through systematically. These verses of scripture talk about what God did for us when he gave us a new heart and new spirit. When we were born again, when we received, granted repentance to be able to turn around, to be different. To be new people, to be a new creation, to be a holy nation, hmm. a precious treasure, a royal priesthood. These kind of things you need to think about yourself. You start thinking about these, self, these things about yourself. You start taking the identity that he's given to us and describing yourself in terms of those words and adjectives that God describes you. Everything changes. Everything changes. Then somebody comes along, comes along, tries to tell you something else, huh? You're like, you're a liar. <laughs> it's foreign to you because right. you bathed in the truth. Right. You know the truth. Mm -hmm. The truth has liberated you. Now a lie comes and tries to put you into bondage. You know, I'm not going in that prison. Huh? I'm tired of unlocking prison doors for people. Letting them come out. They come out of the prison doors. They're running around the halls of the prison. And then by the end of the meeting, they go shut themselves back in the cell. I'm tired, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. We're going to get outside now. We're leaving the halls of the prison. We're going to walk outside. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Hebrews 8, 10. For this is the covenant. Once again, here is Paul making it right, bringing it right down to who we are right now. This is who we are. Somebody said, am I the house of Israel? No, you've been brought into the house of the Lord through the covenant that God established in the house of Israel and with Judea. The church was made up of nothing more than the, the descendants of Abraham. For many years, the first part of the establishment of the church, but the gospel was for the whole nations of the earth. That's why we can take these verses of Scripture, sound like it's only for Israel, but it's not. It's for all the nations of the earth. It's for whosoever will. It's just that we bring it into the context. We take it from the context of that which was announced by the prophets concerning what God would do for anybody who was willing to participate. And now we begin to understand it in light 
of this wonderful redemption that has been made available to all men. For God's not willing that any man should perish. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all of us, teaching us how to walk this new life, how to live this new, this new life. Praise God. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith God. I will put my laws into their mind. Look, I am going to cause you, I am going to make you literally to keep my statutes, to know and to keep my judgments so that you will be able to do them. I'm going to put them in your heart. In other words, I'm going to write these things on your nature. So if you start doing something that is contrary to the divine nature, to the nature of God, it's going to tear at you. It's going to be on you. It's going to correct you till you come into line. I'm going to, I am by my own good pleasure going to perfect and going to will and do of my good pleasure on the inside of you. This is God looking on the author and finisher of our faith. For we, know, we can be certain of this one thing, Hallelujah. that he who began this good work will finish it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because he's written his laws on the heart Hallelujah. and on our minds right here. And I will be to them a God. I will be to them God, and they will be to, my, be to me my people. And when God's your God, and when you know that God, who is the only God, is your God, then you understand a relationship of where he's going to do anything you ask. He's going to take care of you. He's going to be to you as he is and as he was to Christ Jesus because Christ Jesus called the Father his God. He said, I go to my God and to your God, to my Father and to your Father. Hallelujah. Jesus continually address the Father as his God. And so now we can understand with a little bit more clarity that wonderful relationship that we get to have because he became everything that we are so that we could be everything that he is as a free gift of salvation. As a free gift. God did it for us. When he granted to us repentance and remission of sins. Through his own blood, I've been forgiven. Through his blood, every stain of sin, every offense, everything that made me unacceptable and unholy, been removed and washed away. And now with faith in the blood, I boldly come into the holies of holies. Hallelujah. I, my body's washed with pure water. Where the, I have full assurance. I have a true heart. It's a new heart. Hallelujah. I have no excuse for sin. None. Not one, not one thing about me needs to be changed by me or by some process. I am what God created me to be in Christ Jesus at the moment of salvation. And now it's nothing more than to grow and to mature, even as we did grow and mature from a baby born of our mother and father. And that's why the Lord, the analogy is perfect. One more verse of Scripture. Hebrews 10. What is it? Is it verse 16 or is it 17? Hebrews 10. Let's go over there and look real quick. Hebrews 10. Verse 16. For, I'm going to start verse 15. Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before... This is the covenant. Say, this is the covenant. This is the covenant. Anybody want to know about what the covenant is? You just turn out of here and say, this is the covenant. It's the covenant of the new birth. It's the covenant of being born again. It's the covenant of a new creation. It's the covenant of the divine nature. It's the covenant of a new heart and a new spirit. It's the covenant now where the Holy Ghost has come to live in me. It's the covenant where God has written His nature upon my law, upon my heart, upon my mind. His laws and His statutes so that I may, so that He may cause me to both do, to keep them and to do them. Hebrews 10, 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. And I will put my laws into their heart. 
and in their mind will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. I'm going to read one more verse's passage of Scripture to you because I think you need to always kind of put the icing on the cake with this. In Romans chapter 8, I'm going to read Romans chapter 8, verse 2, verse 3, and verse 9 to you. And I want you to memorize those, okay? I want you to memorize them, okay? How many of you will memorize them? Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The Lord sees those hands. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. This wonderful work of grace, the law of the spirit of life, what is that? That's the new heart, that's the new spirit, that's the new creation, that's his laws written upon my heart and upon my mind. That's him being my God and now me being his person, we being his people, we being the temple of the living God, he live in, uh, living in us, walking in us, dwelling in us. That's the law of the spirit of life. Hallelujah. That's the law of God. That's the new covenant. That's this law of the redemption where you and I were born of the Spirit, born of God, made a new creation so that the very life of Jesus Christ, the very life of the Father comes and lives and dwells on the inside of us so that we can do these things because we've received of His Spirit. We can walk with Him and we can obey Him and we can know how to please Him because we've got the Holy Ghost inside of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. And without the Holy Ghost, you can't do nothing. You can't see Jesus. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. That's the new covenant, His Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Living, dwelling in Him. Hallelujah. Ha. Him living, dwelling in me. I'm not going to let go of that. I'm not going to let go of that for a second. Living, dwelling in him. I'm not letting go of that for a second. Satan would like me to let go of that. I'm not letting go of it. He'll come, he'll come at me with every lying wonder. He'll come at me with every trick he can possibly come at me with. But I'm not letting go of it. I'm in him and he's in me. I'm living and dwelling in him. He's living and dwelling in me. I'm not letting go of it. I'm going to rejoice in it. I'm going to praise God for it. In the midst of the storm, in the midst of the battle, in the midst of the fight, in the midst of the conflict, uh, you'll find me praising. You'll find me rejoicing. You'll find me in the place of those who have strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll find me giving praise. There's nothing like praising. Hallelujah. That's why our Lord, that's why our Lord sprang up out of Judah. He sprang up out of praise. Our Lord always springs up out of praise. Hallelujah. Wherever there is praise, everything Satan tries to do is mowed down by the Spirit of the living God. Destroyed and slain by the breath of his lips. Hallelujah. When he breathed on them, said receive the Holy Ghost. Breath of his lips. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sword uh, uh, of his proclaimed word. Praise the name of Jesus. Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus has made me free and then nobody bringing me into bondage. I don't care what kind of doctrine you've got. I don't care what kind of clever explanations you've got. I don't care what kind of, uh, of, of manner of speech or, or what kind of proofs you've got. Nothing bringing me back under bondage to sin or death. No part of me. None of me. I don't care if it's the wisest and the best preacher that possibly could have ever existed living in this generation. I'm not listening. Nothing will bring me out of this law of life that is in Christ Jesus. I'm not going back into the realms of sin and death. I'm not going back into the halls of bondage. Hallelujah. He liberated me. He delivered me from the power of Satan and brought me to God. He gave Paul that power. He gave me that power. How much more should that power and that reality be real to each one of us? To, to be an experience that we all embrace. I was delivered from the power of darkness and brought to his light. I was delivered from the power of Satan and brought into the dom domain of Almighty God. Come on now. 
Hallelujah. What is that? Acts 26, 18. You can bring that one in. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Verse three, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, through the ability of men, God sending his own son, the likeness of sinful flesh, condemned sin in the flesh. Now, verse nine, but ye are not in the flesh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, verse eight, I meant to say verse eight. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Same way, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And without faith, you cannot please God. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And they that are in doubt cannot please God. They that are in unbelief cannot please God. They that still view themselves in the same former conversation, same problem, same manner of life, still trying to get right, still trying to have this wonderful grace, still, have it, still trying to have this wonderful experience of the new covenant, can't please God. Hey, man, you're listening to me. Yes. Grab a hold of what God said, declare it, and let it be true in your life. Yes. And, and rejoice in it and watch what will take place. Demand these things of yourself. Giving all attendance to making your calling and election sure and watch what happen to you. Hallelujah. You'll be experienced from the rising of the sun to the going down, even into rise at midnight and praise Him. <laughs> For of course, around here, most time you don't need to rise at midnight and praise Him because we're still up. <laughs> Praising Him. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, I was, I went to a meeting with Brother Yun in a church and, and they asked me to get up and minister after Brother Yun was finished. And so I got up and I recognized those people needed several hours of ministry <laughs> to have a breakthrough. So I just started getting warmed up and I'm just, I'm, and then, and then the, the guy who was running the meeting said, no, 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 I know who you are. You guys do church by the calendar. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, the anointing just now becoming manifest in the place. We ought to keep on going. I said, no, no, no. These people won't be able to in, endure it. And so I had to sit down. But yeah, you know what? The threat effect of it is, is many times we need to do church services by the calendar. <laughs> we need to spend long time here with the Lord. How long have you been spending with other things throughout the week? Uh, listen, uh, we just spend a little bit more time with the Lord every day. We wouldn't have to have meetings so long on Wednesday night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Breakthrough coming quite earlier. Hallelujah. Praise, glory, come quite. Everybody get strength and power. God, everybody be healed, strengthened, filled, receive everything that they have need of in short order. <laughs> but we're going to make sure we're not going to just, we're not going to just have a meeting for the sake of a meeting. We're going to grab a hold of the things of God, see the spirit of the Lord strengthen you, Amen. build you up so that you can receive an inheritance Hallelujah. among all of those, Amen. Hallelujah, who are Hallelujah. saints living in the glorious light of the Hallelujah. living God. Thank you, Amen. Amen. So verse nine, you're not in the flesh. Amen. <laughs> but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. I'm not in the flesh. I'm in the spirit. How? Because he that is born of the spirit is spirit. You see, that's how I'm not in the flesh. Jesus said, Nicodemus, you're in the flesh. And if you're in the flesh, you can't come into the kingdom. And you must be born again. He said, how can I, get, how can I be born again? He said, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Yeah, you're going to have to go through your mama's womb to be born of the flesh. But to be born of the Spirit is the miracle of the new covenant. Hallelujah. Says God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give you a new heart and a new spirit, and I put my spirit on the inside of you. I'm spirit. <laughs> I'm not flesh. I will not be flesh. Amen. And any time I see anything going on where people are stuck in that realm, I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out. I'm calling you into the new covenant. This is the new covenant, says God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you. And then, you know, you can't just say, well, I'm this and I'm that because no, you're going to have to co cooperate with what God did and what God said. He made this wonderful opportunity for us to have fellowship with Him. We can't just make a religion and say, well, it's, it's done what, no matter what I do because that's not true. It's done. Now we've got to fully participate. Huh? It, he's made it available to us. It's our opportunity. It's our privilege. It's our gift. And now we've got to want those things more than anything else that, that could possibly be imagined. Otherwise, yeah, we're going to be in the flesh, walking around like a bunch of the, like the world. But don't tell me that you're born again, living in the flesh, because you're not born again. Huh? 
you may be born, you, you may be backslidden if that's the state of your living. But if you're born of the Spirit, then the Spirit is, the Holy Ghost is on you and He's causing you to walk in the judgments. He's causing you to keep the statutes. He's causing you to do them. And there is no way you're going to live in it. You're not live in it. You may trip up in it, but you're not going to live in it. And then the Lord will show you how to walk in such a way that you won't even stumble. Hallelujah. Because Hallelujah. that's what he said. That's his promise. Thought, Jesus said, be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want to be perfect for him. So if I said, you can't be perfect, well, you just have to go argue with yourself. I want to be perfect with him because I'm not going to argue with him. I want to be perfect for my Father, my heavenly Father. Look at what all he's done for me. I want to please him. I want to be perfect for him. I don't, want to, I don't want him to be able to find anything in me that is offensive or hurts him in any way. I'm here to live. And I don't find that as some harsh and hard lifestyle to have to live. I find it as a place where I get to throw myself upon his, on his mercy and learn how to live by His grace. Hallelujah. His divine provision, His help, His strength, His ability, doing nothing of myself, living out the light that He's given me. Amen. And empowered me to live. Amen. Praise God. Everybody stand with me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Now tonight... I just want to say this. I guess I've been preaching a long time. Everybody's mass exodus to the restroom. I had no idea I preached that long. I didn't realize it was going that quick, quite that late. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, you know, I feel like waiting for everybody to come back. <laughs> Don't want anybody to miss anything. I want to say to you tonight, it's just really simple, dear people. If you've, been, if you've been tossed by doubt and unbelief, tonight we have the means of grace and provision where you don't have to be tossed by doubt and unbelief ever again. Tonight you can come into the, one of the most beautiful and special relationships with the Lord where He provides us with one of the most important gifts that you can imagine. One of the most important strengths that can even ever be asked for. That's the realm of faith. He gives us faith to us. We live out faith. Where we live at, faith is absolutely knowing. Faith has no shadow of doubt in it. Faith is absolutely confident and certain. Faith knows that it's done. Faith lives in the result. Faith lives in the finished work of it. Faith lives in the beauty and the enjoyment and the relationship of it. It's something that we don't conjure up or create for ourselves, or convince ourselves of. It's something that the Holy Spirit just gives to us. The grace of God provides for us. And He gives to every man this measure of faith. So that you and I can know tonight, so that the battle will come to an end, the struggle will come to an end, the warring in yourself. Because it's a big difference of warring in yourself versus having a war, fighting a good warfare against the powers of darkness, weapons of our warfare, not carnal, but mighty through God, pulling down his strongholds, casting down imaginations, bringing every thought into captivity. Bringing every thought to a place where it's obeying and submitted to the knowledge and person of Jesus Christ, lifestyle of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I just want you to accept this grace of God that has been, giving, been given so that you can spend all of your life going, Father, I adore I lay my life before you How Thou Jesus Jesus Yes I lay my life before you. Holy Spirit, sing it. Spirit, I adore you. I lay Oh, how I love you.
I want everybody in this place, I want you to just raise your hands right now towards heaven. <laughs> Father, I ask you tonight in your mercy and your grace, once again, move by your wonderful love and power and cause every person that is standing in this building tonight to realize how much you love them. You've left them out of nothing. Father, I thank you for the capacity to believe your word. You've not made it difficult. You've not made it a mystery. You've not made it hard. You've made it easy. Your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. And though, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that everyone in this place will get rid of the leaven so that they can live in heaven. The leaven of false doctrine and the leaven of sin. That they can from this day forward no longer have to wrestle with the thoughts of unbelief and false doctrines and the doctrines of men. But instead live in the doctrine of the new covenant. Enjoy this fellowship and this purpose. I tell you, God has made me in charge of the earth. And you too. It all belongs to us. It all belongs to the church. I'm telling you, people running around trading and spending money. It's not theirs. It's God's and it belongs to the church. It's true. He's given us all things freely to rejoice. He's put us in charge and it's time for us to begin to live out this divine purpose with divine power and authority to go everywhere, setting the captives free, utilizing the resources of this earth, to accomplish those things that God has purposed us to do, to go everywhere and preach the gospel of repentance and remission of sins. In His name. Father, I thank You that now in this day, in this hour, in this time, Your people are going to begin to shine with the light, the brightness of it. Hallelujah. With the praise of it, with the divine power and authority of it that every person in this place is going to learn what it means to live out the life of walking in the Spirit, being filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Building themselves up in this wonderful realm of faith. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Well, tonight, people, you're saying God wants to work a miracle for you in the realms of your finances as well. There's, this is certain uh, that we are preparing for troublesome days ahead. We know that things are in peril. Church is in peril. Society is in peril. Things are in peril throughout the earth like never before. God's people are going to have to have the ability and the latitude to know how to move in faith and to keep things advancing when everybody else is at a standstill. And so we want you to be able to realize that provision of supernatural blessing, miraculous blessing that only comes from God to those who do not weary in well-doing. Some people don't think that offering should be in a part of every church service. Well, the Lord Jesus said that this that that this that that woman is that this woman has done uh, shall always be preached wherever the gospel is preached, and that was all about an offering of giving something very costly and very precious to the Lord Jesus. And he saw it and said it was a memorial. So it was with Cornelius's house. Their giving was a memorial. Not a memorial among men. Men have a memorial. There's a memorial for various different things. Memorials here in the military. You know, memorials around the earth where great battles were fought or great things accomplished. Well, a memorial in heaven concerning those things that we did in the kingdom of God as far as supersedes any other memorial. And we, by the help and the grace of God, will labor harder this year and see God do more through our lives and be a more fruitful year and prosperous year than has ever been before. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll just take it up another notch in 2015. Amen. 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 Right now it's this year. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. 
There may be battles all around you. There may be threatening voices everywhere. But you've got to learn how to not listen to those if you're going to move in faith. Many people are afraid. They hear the voices, the scare tactics, the intimidation. But there's got to be a Caleb that says, let us do it immediately. We are well able. We're well able. Forget about what you see. Forget about all the other evidence. We are well able. Let us do it immediately for we can overcome it. We are well able to overcome it. That is all the obstacles that stand between you and me or between you, between us rather, and the inheritance. And the full maturity and full realization of all the things that Father has purposed us to do. So we give, of our, we give it all. We, give, we continually give the offering of praise and thanksgiving. We give all of our heart. We give all of our time, all of our purpose of life, all of our value, all of our meaning, everything that we are, we find ourselves in Christ Jesus, not in us. So therefore, it's easy to also go ahead and believe God in everything. If he tells us to go to some place where there's great turmoil and preach the gospel, and it may mean our life. We're willing, to, we're willing to go and offer up our life on the altar of sacrifice because there's nothing that he would ask of us that we're not willing to participate in doing. And everything that God asks us to do, everything he asks us to participate with him, boy, I feel that wonderful, miraculous gift of faith right now. I'm telling you, it's majestic, it's full of splendor and wealth and glory and power. Listen to me. When we're willing to obey God with the two mites, it will get God's attention. And when you get God's attention, I'm going to guarantee you, God makes the decision on what's going to happen in every dimension of this life. With one word, Father can e easily change. With one just slight gesture, can easily change every dimension of our life, including our financial dimension, spiritual dimension, everything. The level, the manifest anointing that is not only in our life, but revealed through our lives. Boy, I want that. I want a greater anointing revealed through my life. I want you to pray for me that I can make known the gospel as it should be made known, which has to be done by the power of the Holy Spirit. You be, must be endued with the promise of the Father, power from on the eye to be able to preach this gospel Amen. in such a way that it causes men to not be able to resist. And I want that for you as well. I want, you to, I want to see God bless you so that many souls come into the kingdom through you. I want to see God bless you so that you have finances to do many things in the realms of the kingdom. I don't want, we don't need finances for ourselves. We need finances to do the things that the Lord would have us to do in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So tonight I want you to give. I want you to give from your heart. It may cost you. It may mean that it may mean that you have lack in other areas from a practical evaluation. But let me tell you, God sees that. He sees the two mites and says, she gave out of her living, that was what she was going to eat on. In other words. And he said, I tell you, she gave more than everybody else who gave out of their abundance. And I want you to understand that Father has promised to take that gift and he's promised to cause a blessing to come upon our lives. Old Testament, New Testament. He's commanded a blessing upon us of riches, of wealth, of abundance. So that he may, he said, establish his covenant. And it is effectively established in the eyes of the unbeliever. Look at that blessing on those people's lives. Who are they? Father has that for us. We're not going to weary in well-doing because we're going to reap. We faint not. The most important thing that I want to reap is a great Holy Ghost revival in Southern California. But I'm going to tell you right now, it costs money to do it. And Father's purpose that we have that inheritance as well. And all we have to do is participate in obedience with them faithfully there. And we will reap if we do not faint. If you sow generously, God promised it. He cannot lie. He said you will reap generously. 
and he was talking about finances because he was asking to sow finances at that moment. But he said, I cause all grace to abound unto you. In other words, he hooked up every other dimension, and nobody can deny this. He hooked up every other dimension of the things of the spiritual with respect to the giving. Because when he said, I cause all grace to abound unto you so that you'll have all sufficiency in all things. Amen. Amen. So let's just get it. Let's get a hold of that realm of faith. What happens is when we obey, faith comes. When we obey, faith comes. See, faith comes by hearing the word. Okay? So you hear the word, you believe the word, and then you act on it. There's faith. That's where faith happens. So once you come and bless the Lord with your giving, if you're behind in your ties, get up, get caught up tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the anointing. God bless. Bless my dear son. Bless her, Father. Tell her, kind of her head that's over to you. Kill her. Hallelujah. Pull muscle. I, I will pray for anybody who's got any pain in their body. If you have any pain in your body, uh, any sickness, any pain in your body, I want you to come. I heard on the news that there's some terrible new virus that's about to come to America that causes great excruciating pain. How many of you would like to get that virus? Okay, just check in. Well, right now in the name of Jesus, here's what I do with those kinds of things. I bind it. I bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. It may be coming to America, but it ain't coming to me. It has no power or authority over me. It ain't going to come in my life. And I'm day right now, everybody who obeys me and under my leadership ain't coming to you either. How you like that? And you know what? God allows us to do that. He allows us to protect and take care of the people who he's given us responsibility for. Now, if you're on your own, you're going to have to work that out between you and the Lord. But if you let us be helpers of your faith, I'm telling you right now, we'll hook up together and we'll all see that we won't have anything to do with the flu and nor any other sicknesses. Anybody else, you got any sickness in your body, any disease in your body? You know, the good news is that we preach the word tonight. The Lord is here to confirm his word with signs, wonders following. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's just what he does. So um, right now, just be healed. Just let your hands towards him be healed. Whatever the the broke stain, but the man get the bed and I'm a tula ramat para dia pro. There it is. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Cast the coat of mangle. Hallelujah. Mongoja kanane. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, I want the whole world to know about this right here. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that feel it? You can feel that. See, I serve a God that I can feel. Some people got problems while they talk about feel. Like there's some scripture that we don't walk by feelings. Oh, you talk about feeling. Ah, oh, scripture says oh, we walk by uh, faith, not by sight. True. So what does that have to do with anything? Right? It was always back over here to feelings. Because they want to try to put it, we walk by faith, not by feelings. I walk by feeling. Feeling love, feeling joy, feeling peace. Amen. I'm not going to be without it. God said, let peace rule your heart. I mean, talk about it. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to let peace rule your heart and rule your mind, you're going to come on. Peace is not a feeling. Peace is not a feeling, but worry is. <laughs> Would somebody please make up their mind? Are you with me? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Rabbi Basta Karamamrede. What people need to do is they need to quit. 
making decisions and doing things outside of feeling the presence, the manifest presence of the Lord. If people would just stop making decisions and doing things out of the realm of turmoil and frustration and fear and that human realm, self-realm. See, the self is something that we deny every day. You know that? And that's, self is different than the flesh of Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Very different. Jesus denied himself every day, told us to deny ourselves every day. Different realm. It's really good to, to get those things right. Hallelujah. We're not dependent upon our own ability anymore. That's the flesh realm. The human realm. That which we could do out of our own discipline. That's what Nicodemus did. Now, we've been born of the Spirit. We have the Holy Ghost. Now we have a divine ability to do the things that please God out of that realm. Amen? Amen. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Praise God. <laughs> Jonathan, what do you need, man? Whatever you um, need is coming to you right now. Okay. I, um, to be, we'll work on my disbelief and stuff like that. But I, I ate something that I think my body doesn't agree with. Okay. So, so. Well, right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We th thank you for the mercy. Thank you for the healing. What's up? I've been having some kind of like pains. Pain in your chest? Well, in the name of Jesus, that's just afflicting, tormenting activity. It goes as soon as it touches you. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that pretty amazing how that happens? And how that happens? Because Jesus said he'd confirm his word. That's why that happens. And so whenever the gift of faith is present, things happen. We want the gift of faith to be in your life. Hallelujah. See, the power of the Lord can be present to heal, but you got to break through to that realm. You do. You have to be willing to break through the room. You break through that room by we're saying, tear the roof off. <laughs> huh? The power of the Lord was present to heal, but no one was getting healed. Now, two, now about four guys tear the roof off. <laughs> She's trying to preach. The whole place is smoky now. I wish somebody would do a movie of that, a short story of that. Huh? It's a hot Capernaum day. People are tearing off the thatch roof. That's dusty, man. <coughs> Let's the guy down. You get to see him. <laughs> then miracle power is released. This faith is yours, dear people. This faith is yours. God has given us his treasure. God has given us his treasure. You have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to step out of your own place where you occupy control of your life. And with total abandonment, just step over here and just believe God radically. Hallelujah. And you'll see God radically. I was really blessed by the prophecy that Angelica brought forth the other night because, you know, see, that's, that's part of the new covenant. To pour out His Spirit, to give His Spirit the Holy Ghost, to everyone. I didn't read the passage in Joel chapter 2, and I could have gone on and on and on. The, the description of the new covenant, always at the very heart, of the description of the new covenant is the activity of the Holy Ghost, creating the miracle of the new birth, creating the miracle of signs and wonders, creating the miracle of the manifest presence, creating the miracle of the giftings like prophecy. The Lord just, it, I'm just so, it's just so enriching because I hear Him saying as He begins to raise up, these giftings of the Spirit in the midst of us for people who want the gifts of the Spirit more than the lust of the flesh. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Charity, listen to me. Everybody, listen to me. Because I see you distracted. Listen to me. You can either have the toys of the flesh or the riches of the Spirit. You choose. You can either have the toys of the flesh of a demonic realm of lust and evil and iniquity, or you can have the riches of the Holy Ghost. I pray you choose the riches of the Holy Ghost because there's no glory like that. There's no place like that. There's no realm like that. 
And the Lord just saying, seek me. Withhold nothing from me and I will withhold nothing from you. Yield to me for I have many things to reveal to you. That's what he's saying to this church. When, when, when Angelica came up and gave me that word of prophecy, you know, I don't care where it comes from. I don't care if it comes from a four-year-old person or a 40-year-old person or 90-year-old person. I hear the voice of the Lord. That's precious to me where God is speaking. And I'm going to pay attention. When he's saying that, I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, well, I am seeking him. So, you know, guys, get with the program because he's talking to you. No, 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 no. <laughs> and he's talking to us. So he said, I want you to seek me, Mark. So I put my name there. He said, so I hear, seek me, Mark. Hold nothing back from me and I will hold nothing back from you. That's exactly what I want. So then when he says, seek me, then I know he's wanting something more from me. He's wanting something, want, he's, wanting more, he's wanting more activity with me. So what am I going to do? Just go on doing the same thing? Could I have a normal life the next day? Normal being the life that I had the day before. No way. No way. Not if I've grown up a little bit and no longer just a baby child being carried away, carried around. But I've matured enough to be a son, young man, who has the word of God abiding in me. I've overcome the wicked one. I'm, I'm going to say no. I'm going to make adjustments. I'm not going to accommodate God. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to obey him. He's my master. What he wants is more important than anything else. What God wants is more important than what the boss wants. What God wants is more important than what the government wants. Huh? Amen. Stop putting the job and the boss and the government first. Put God first. Amen. And let everything else kind of find its priorities after that. <laughs> Lord says, yield to me. And I'll reveal myself to you. Just do it. Just do it. I'm going to remind you of this. God doesn't, if, 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 if Father finds that when he speaks, it's just words going out in the air for people to say, oh, look, somebody's moving in the gifts of the Spirit or whatever. Father, quit speaking. Because we're not willing to do it. And the more he pronounces, the more he reveals, the more responsibility we have. But when he finds hungry hearts that hear him say something, and we grab a hold of it and say, yes, Lord, I'll do that. Yes. Yeah. Papa's going to keep speaking. It's a beautiful thing. He's going to keep revealing. So much, that, that proclamation, so much, is loaded with Father saying, I want my manifest presence in your life. And I hear the Lord saying that. He's doing that in my life more than has ever happened in my life before, just over the past month. Such an increase in manifest presence to the Lord. I know that's what the Lord wants. I know that that is essential to doing the things flowing and operating in the Holy Ghost, to doing the works of Jesus, manifest presence. Without the manifest presence, there's no, man, there's no manifest works. It's that relationship that produces that faith. It's that relationship, seeing the Father, experiencing the Father, hearing the Father. I say only what the Father says to hear the Father say. I do only what I hear, see the Father do. That's the manifest presence. Sure is. Sure is. Don't be... It, it don't for a moment think that God's left you out. You could leave yourself out. God hasn't left you out. Anybody else want prayer? Bring the little guy here. Let's say bulldogs. Get fired up. Look at me, look at you here. Let me move your hand. Dude, are you a Ramonaite? Hey. Hey, mister. Hey, mister. Thank you. Hey, mister. You gonna be a preacher? Amen. You reckon like you'd be like, looking, you could be like your great grandpa? Amen. Huh? Preacher Daryl Millen? Huh? Thank you. You reckon you could be like that? You reckon you'd be like your great grand, great great grandpa? Mm -hmm. Your great grandpa? Huh? Great you reckon? I reckon. Yeah. 
Father, thank you for the anointing on little Mr. Bulldog here. Father, thank you. Take a hold of these feet. Shod them with the preparation of the gospel, God. Jesus' name. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 